There you go. That should be better. <laughs> oh, yes. I've been in here mucking about with everything. And uh, yeah, everything's all a wash. So let me know how the audio sounds to you folks. If it's okay. If it needs a little blessing. I have been in here messing with all these buttons. And I can't tell you that the buttons are buttoned. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, today is one of these days where... I needed to come in, get some stuff done, and I don't know why, but I got a raucous headache today. Like, it is pounding my melon and is obnoxious. Not a good look. Anyway, let's talk about it, fam. What is going on with you folks out here today? Um, We just did a really cool podcast episode, like going back and re-looking into what's happening in the video podcasting space and uh, thinking about going in and rechanging some of that checklist vibe to get it going on. So um, yeah, interesting. One thing that I did want to uh, talk about today is there still seems to be a lot of mix up when it comes to I guess getting your 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 audio situation situation straightened out for your shows right um i'm still seeing people saying that they're having problems when they're doing their guest interviews that their guest levels are all over the place and a lot of people are thinking that it's the software but like the software doesn't muck with levels like the levels are what they are right if you said it and it's quiet then you have it set too soft if you set it and it's loud then you have it set too high it doesn't like in the middle of you using it move by itself right and i don't think you understand that i think people think software is magic it's not software primarily is like any other tool like a hammer and nails and some two by fours is how you build a house but you still have to know how to structurally frame them in a manner that it's not going to get blown down by the big bad wolf or whatever the case may be right at some point in time you have to know how to frame right it's not just that you have a hammer and nails and a two by four right so i'm i'm super curious as to how people are getting lost and the, the last comment i saw which was even more funny to me is the person that was talking about it was talking about being a like a uh, 30 or 40 year tv audio person and i'm like all right then why are you confused <laughs> i'm like super confused anyway so maybe it's just because you know people assume that the software is going to work so here's what you do once you once you set your levels and you should do this whether you're doing it for your podcast or whatever so i'm going to show you guys this site um I actually have the full piece of software, but let me show you guys this site. This site right here is known as the Ulean Broadcast Meter. Let me drag Leonardo down here so we only have one tab in there that's better. All right, this is known as the Ulean um, Audio Meter, right? And what the meter does, they have an online version of this meter. So you can come down here and you can say, here's the online meter. You can click on start the metering and then um, make sure that it's listening, you know, to your your right audio interface or whatever. For some reason on mine, it's not catching right now, but I normally do that and I normally do that and then I leave that there. And now it's going to normally tell you like how your setup is working just the way i have the streamer x set up it is not able to send that through here normally um when i use my roadcaster pro or just checking it with other interfaces you'll normally see this bouncing it's something about the way the streamer x has been designed to not let it pass back through to here uh it doesn't exactly bite but you will find out normally if you come in you set yourself up and you um 
turn this on, this will bounce in the cording. The other thing you can do though, is you can bring in a file, right? So if I was to click on analyze a file, let me see if I have a small piece of audio that I have put here. Um, when little teeny one, that's a huge file, but let's see if I have a small one. Dun, dun, dun. I'm looking for one that I might have done as a short or something. You know, a lot of times when I do my shorts, I end up with an audio file. And if not, I'll just I'll just throw a big one at it, like whatever. I got fast upload speed. We'll call it a day. Okay, so most of the ones that I've saved as shorts, I've thrown away already. So let me just take this file here, and I'm going to say add a file, hit the download. Boom, I'm just going to throw this one at it real quick. All right, so it's uploading this file and it's going to analyze the file. Now, again, this is the online version. I have the actual downloaded version to my computer. I think what people do still is they're judging what something sounds like based on their headphones. And th that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> right here while we wait for that to happen uh you can't just count what you hear in your headphones as a thing because i can make my headphone loud just by turning it up or i can make it quiet by turning it down right so you know you can get false levels by using your headphones okay now this file finished let me dip back over here and it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but I will just see if I can copy this. Will it let me copy it? Yes, it did. And then I'm going to just put it as an Ecamm overlay real quick. So I'll paste it in here, and there it is. So that is what the meter actually read when it read this. Um, hold on. Oh, that EXT. I was like, where did extra word come from? <laughs> That's nothing. Here, let's, let's 86 this part of the word. We don't need this last part. All right. So just by taking the recording and throwing it up at Uline, it's telling me that the overall loudness is negative 15.39 LUTs. And we're shooting for negative 14 to 16 on Ecamm. So this is perfect. I mean, not on Ecamm, sorry, on YouTube. This is perfect, right? This is basically a perfectly executed levels, if you would, you know, the way, say, sort of Ecamm is picking it up, right? So I think that people don't realize that you can check this stuff, but the smoothest way to check this is to use an app like Auphonic, right? So... If you record a small segment of audio and then you give it to Alphonic, Alphonic will basically give you what I just showed you through this loudness meter. And you can tell because you can send the file there and then pull another file right back out and, and see what is done. Marine X, my brother, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. it says, I need a bicolor light with a four foot softbox. Dang, that is massive softbox. <laughs> uh for table saw other two other two's planning to do a ceiling mount. There you go. There you go. Um I will show you. I will show you what is my favorites right now. Both of these are good. I do have a question. Uh please answer. Why do you think you need bicolor? Um nowadays I don't think it's necessary anymore. I used to always be about getting the bicolor lights, but I don't think it's necessary anymore um, just due to the fact that cameras are really good at white balancing and you're normally going to use that extra bicolor light when you're when the rest of your lights can't get to daylight, right? So if the lights that are already in that facility, garage, you know, workshop, whatever, which is funny, I'm going to the workshop today. Um, yeah, when you can't get there, that might be a reason, but yeah, please let me know why you want 
why you want that, then I can uh, give you a better recommendation. Anyway, let's go to the Amazon. Let's go shopping. Yes. And then let's come here. This is my favorite light at the moment. CL220. Oh, there you go. There you go. You film in warm light on purpose. Gangster. That's the answer. All right. <laughs> so, um, this does go down to 2700. So, the majority of the lights out at this point in time can dip that far down. And 2700 is about when you're going like hella warm. So, it uh, you might see lights nowadays that don't say by color. But they, they, if they go down to 27, they're by color, period, right? Um, this one does actually put it in there. But for the fact that you're going to mount it really far away and you're going to use a big dish on it, I would probably rock in the 200 range. And I believe to me right now, just based off of what's available in the street, this is one of the bangingest lights out there. Um, I got to play with this a lot at NAB when I was in Vegas. And I don't know if you saw when I opened up the babies. I do have the babies up in this room right here. So if you look back here in that corner back there, that is the RGB version of what we are speaking on. Hey, there we go. This is, I was going to say, it's really weird, man. Like, I wasn't able to type into the comment box, but I got it. Boom. There it is. So let me pull out the little one. I did just reconnect my overhead. So if it's goofy, my bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting my studio back together after all of this running around in the streets the last couple of weeks. So this is the smaller version of that. No. There you go. We should be good. Got it. Thank you, Paul. This is um, just want to show you. I say what I was saying is this is the 60 watt version of the 200. I do think that you should go 200 just because of the size of the dome you're trying to fill. But uh, look how tiny this is, you know, and the build quality is solid metal, no plastic um, like the small rig and some of these other guys, they come in plastic. But what's really cool about this is uh, I love the rail system on these, but just check out the check out the size of that. That's a cam link. This is the actual light. The RGB version of this is right back there shining on the wall. So if I do this here and I don't know if I can if I have enough to pull back, but let me see. Uh, no, no pan, tilt and zoom on that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I can't pull back far enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this thing is dope. So this is the 200 watt version. They even come in the RGB version if you're really trying to get swanky with it. Um, that, the link is down in the description. I just think these guys are the hottest new kids on the block. Um, their app is pretty solid too, kind of easy to use. Uh, so like back there... I am currently rocking the plurps, but if I open this app real quick, where you go put the app you? Is that it? No. There it is. <laughs> you should remember where you put the app. I think it's kind of important. Okay, so right now I'm currently using it in this sort of a purple phase, right? But I can pick, you know, all myriad color swatches, you know, go and do things. So 
you got a similar light to Doc at B and H the other day. What what was the um what was the brand, Monsignor Sammy? Let me know. Curious. Right. So yeah, you can go inside here and make all kinds of weird adjustments. You can uh set up various different color temperatures, gels, like all of the above. So I'm currently, as you guys know, here if I come back to this. That is my situation here, but I can change it to blue. Let me change it to red and then come down to the intensity and crank it up. See, boom, now it's red. I can yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So you can get in there. You can kind of change it to whatever you want. I can do some weird stuff like turn it into a fireplace and just have it like, look, the back of the room is on fire. <laughs> you know, you can turn it into fireworks. So, yeah, you can do all kind of cool stuff with it. Um, Really am loving this light, though, just because of the quietness of it. Like it doesn't it doesn't make a, a whole hell of a lot of noise which I think is a blessing. A lot of times these guys are just loud, bro. You don't want you don't want to deal with that. The, no don't no, nobody want to deal with that loudness while you're out here in these streets trying to do your thing. So, put this back at 288 where it goes. And then turn down the brightness a little bit. And let me keep it about right here. Bam. Now we cooking with Pam. Yeah, the Godox UL60, um, it is a fantastic light. It is of the the first gen cob lights, so the body is bigger. Um, the cool, the new gen of cob lights, so that means this guy back here, this Cobor, the new Amram. Um, wait, my brother just got two of Amrams yesterday. Uh, the Amram uh, 150C, 300C. Like those guys, the new small rig guys, like the new breed, they all come with smaller bodies and brighter wattage, which is crazy. So a lot of the new babies, they're saying that they're 60 watts because of their power consumption, but they're pushing closer to 80, 90 watts worth of lights um, because pod cobs, sorry, cob, by the way, people stands for circuit on board. That's that yellow portion that you see. You know what? Good thing it comes in the case, huh? <laughs> Let me show you this real quick. That is the cob, this piece right here, right? Circuit on board. If you look at it closely, it looks like a bunch of little corn. And I, it's circuit on board, but I think most people call it cob because of the, the little dots in there does look like corn but um yeah that that is where your light is coming from so most of the new gen they require less fan work and they have higher output and cleaner output um so one thing that sammy on point though a lot of the first gen as opposed to the next gen a lot of these first gen ones are on sale. Wait, he just said exactly what I was about to say. You save 200 bucks. <laughs> exactly. So a lot of the first gen ones are on sale. There's nothing wrong with the first gens. And actually, I think, Sammy, that is on sale even on the Zon. Um, what is it? The UL60? Because I was in my man Jefferson's office the other day, and he has the UL60, so it's still of the, the big gen. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it, fam. If you get them, they are amazing. They're just bigger. Uh, let's see. UL60. Dun, dun, dun. G O D O X. Yes. Dude, they're so cheap now. Wow. Yeah, but okay. So Sammy, you see how? I wonder what it is on B and H right now. Let's let's go check. 
Go Dogs, G O D O X. CF, no, U L, not C L, U L 60. What are they putting it on sale for? 197. Now, you know, Sammy, send it back. <laughs> send it back and, and get, like, either the Amran or the Colbor or the Nanlite, like, any of the new ones, because it's, for the first-gen big cobs, it's actually kind of expensive for the first-gen big cobs. Also, a 60-watt nowadays should it require this external battery pack? The light quality will be fine. Um, unless it has a slave trigger for filming, this one is actually being outpriced by everything on the market right now. Yeah, 197. I mean, like nowadays, dude, you're looking at like 110. Uh, this oh this is bicolor maybe that's bicolor if it's bicolor then that's in the right that's in the right um, range let me go back where I was over here where do it go right there look at this oh man the price is going up 150 yo this was like seriously 110 bucks just a week ago <laughs> so these are banging though these are absolutely banging. And half the size. I mean, that thing don't weigh jack at all. Raph. Oh, he was just telling me that I'm still mute. Uh, you run a DMX. Why? In your house? <laughs> Why? <laughs> it is that is cool though. DMX version definitely makes it easier. Um, the oh, I footage. You know what I mean? The, the fan is fine. I have this one running in smart fan mode, um, <clears throat> and you definitely don't hear it. This 200 watt, that fan's been on every day for the last how many years, and you definitely don't hear it. Boom. Yeah, this that's this. Thank you, um, Paul. Let me put the link to the color version in here. I am absolutely loving this. Loving this. It has been seriously one of the coolest lights ever. Ever. That's the bicolor version, dude. That is not what we're looking for. We're looking for the color version. It is Cobor CL60R. Actually, you know who has a really uh, nice new one? Um, June picked this one up. It's the Sayun. It's actually a Sayun. It's actually how you pronounce it. Um, and that one is really, really cool. And this is RGBWW. That's all we need. I had to do a video shoot. Took the train to the city. <laughs> yeah, you're in a good spot, Sammy. You're like seriously in the best spot in the world for having to do this kind of stuff. All right, there you go. That is the, ooh, dang it. Why are we missing the C? <laughs> Let me do that again. It's not an Olo bore. It's a coal bore. <laughs> what a dummy. It's not going to fix the YouTube comment, but I can fix it here and then copy it again and give it back. But you guys know what it is. Yeah, this thing is legit, absolutely legit. Um, again, just love the size, love the app situation. It's very easy to, to operate and use. So there it is. Um, so I have the Nanlite version of those domes. The good thing about the domes is they're all hyper interchangeable, right? So remember that they're super hyper interchangeable. This is one you have to see. So this is the new Zayun version. Um, 
and these are amazing. Again, tiny box, right? All of the new ones are coming with these tiny little square boxes because the cops have just gotten better. And, you know, the miniaturization of the game is just incredible. But this is incredible. So June got one of these. I got to steal it from him and bring it and show it to you guys. This is literally the cob and a fan. <laughs> so the whole unit is that big. It is stupid. <laughs> it is literally just the cob and a fan. And you slap a battery on it and you got yourself an amazing light. Um, quite the impressive light. Uh, and amazingly bright, but it's kind of interesting that it is literally just a cob and a fan. It's so silly. Um, this side battery for this kit comes with the side battery. Most people are connecting it to like um, mini V mounts, but they are crazy impressive. Uh, we got to mess with these a lot at NAB too, and we're very over the roof on these bad boys. Man, who started this this light conversation? I could do this for um <coughs> I could do this for hours. <laughs> yeah, they so they have the little pins on the back, Matthew. They're quite amazing too. Um Cobor sells that one, so does uh about seven companies sell that. So what it is is in what Matt's talking about, if you saw the video that I made about the the nanolite one about how you have to put the rods into the thing the new ones just use a little uh tap switches on the back and the little tap switches make it super easy and and you're talking like an 18 inch dome right here this is it this is really cool like do they show the buttons here you go so these little switches on the back make it so easy the godox ones actually come like this but the godox version the little tabs are plastic on the amram version the little tabs are metal but you basically click the tabs it let it lets the tension go on the umbrella and th that therefore makes it better so i don't know if you guys can see this but in this area oh guess what i have a pencil pencil these little tablets right here, you just flick them forward, it releases the tension. And once it releases that tension, it just makes it collapse like instantaneously. Really, really cool. We were like um, doing setup and takes downs at the show. Also, what's really cool about this particular dome, it's not hella deep, right? If you, They should have actually put the dimensions on here so that you can see. But yeah, the new dome is not hella deep at all. So it's much easier to transport. So yes, these are super cool. They're new uh, modifiers. And you know, big, big fan of the portability of this type of dome. Let's see. Uh, this Amran one, interesting. Sorry, Yulanzi one, interesting because it comes with the grid as well as an additional one-stop blocker so you have two different blockers in here right get to the right picture amazon sometimes amazon pictures be driving me crazy so you got the dome itself and then you have a 1d diffuser right here and then you have another normally these are one stop some of these smaller light companies they don't really know what they're doing in stops so it might be a quarter stop or a third of a stop. But normally when you put in another scrim in the middle, you're adding an additional stop of light. So in other words, if your light was set, your camera was set for F4 and it was too bright, you could throw that filter in and it would basically set it to F5, 6. You know what I'm saying? Um, normally, yes, Matthew. Matthew's question is, can you purchase a grid separately that would fit the Amran from another company? Some companies will sell the grid portion separately. You basically just need, and again, Amran didn't put the measurements in their picture. And actually, come to think of it, looks like neither did Yolanzi. <laughs> um, 
You just need to find the size of the grid. Now, it's funny you posit that question, Matthew, because I was trying to help my buddy Jeff find this, and he had a 26-inch dome from Godox because he has the UL60, and nobody else has a 26-inch dome <laughs> except for some company that was way higher. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of weird. It was going to end up being cheaper for him to buy a new dome that came with the grid than to try to buy the extra grid. The extra grid was going to be like 50 bucks and the new dome was 60 bucks. <laughs> so I was like, just buy the new one. Um, so yeah, this one is interesting in the fact that it actually comes with it. It is Bowen's mount. This does have the same tab detachers in there, right? Cause um, secret, they're all made by the same couple of companies. <laughs> so uh, this Ulanzi one actually might be a better look than the Amram one because it's actually coming with the grid. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now you're in there. Now you're in there. In theory, let's see. I think this is probably like an 18-inch grid. Just from what I remember seeing it in real life with my face. Uh, let's see. Do they put a size? It is 17, 17 inches, so it's an 18 inch softbox. And the grid is 16.9. So I, but yours is probably in the same boat because I guarantee you, a dime against two fat boys, they are made in the exact same Fattori. And just, just looking at it, they're probably made in the same factory. Although the MRAM one does seem to have smaller nibs, those things on the end, that's just something the company can request. You know what I mean? So let's see. MRAM. This one is, this is a 22-inch dome. Super weird. And it came with the inner claw, but it didn't come with a grid. Why? Why? Grid is important, fam. <laughs> so for those of you who might be wondering why I don't do that, Doc. The, the reason why you would want a grid, the one right here above me has a grid on it. And what that does is it forces the light straight down to me, but it's dead when I get to right here. It's no longer shining. Right? Here, you can see the light effect. Here, the light is gone. That's because the grid is causing it to go straight and it doesn't leak back. That means I can keep the back of my room relatively dark, but the front of my room is well lit. I mean, like, crazy lit. I mean, to the point that I'm at ISO 200 and, you know, is this well lit? So, what to do, keep it techie? Good to see here, man. This is all Marine X's fault. <laughs> he started the light conversation. <laughs> I could go down that rabbit hole for days. Uh, when I used to do a lot of film work, that lighting was normally I did normally lighting and audio, but boom. Mm. Oh, because it helped cut the cost. Yeah, so I'm sure you can. If you do some research, you can probably find it. Um, and again, if you don't need the grid, don't worry about it. You could also achieve some of the grid oriented things by flagging. That means like in the roundness of the dome, you would basically put a black um, foam core on the side that you didn't want to spray backwards. And if it's really close to the edge of the dome, you can mount it directly to the same light stand with a, with a squeeze clip. And it will do the exact same thing. Grid is just easier to pack. <laughs> so if you're going to move it around, boom. You know, this is going to sound super stupid, right? <laughs> when, and Luis will tell you, uh, I had a 60-watt light in a 48-inch dome. And it works, but that means that the light got to be really close to you. Um. It was because I told Katie to order a 36 inch dome. <laughs> I, somehow, I think I sent her the link accidentally to a 48 inch dome. 
and she ordered what I sent her because Katie's not going to go deviate from the list. So I might have messed that up. But if you come to camp, you'll see it. We have a dome in the ECAM office that's stuck on stupid. I mean, this thing is massive. <laughs> like it's, it's absolutely massive. You could store a small child in there. And I had a 60 watt light on it for the longest time. I ended up just so we can move it further back and keep it out of the way. I ended up changing that to 150 watt light. And then that makes it easier. So if it's me, Brian, I'm going to tell you go with like 24, 30, maybe not much more than that. And so do you, did you already pick um, which brand of light you have? Because they all kind of fit. They're Bowens mount. In theory, majority of the guys on the market are a Bowens mount. And a Bowens mount just is that universal, you know, wise man said, show them, not tell them. <laughs> Um, I will show you my light span stand recommendation. All right. So this light itself does not have a Bowens mount on it. However, it comes with this adapter. And when you put the adapter on there, like such, now it's Bowens mount compatible because this is the Bowens mount. What that allows you to do is see these little three. You all, well, you know it's a Bowens mount when you see the three locking components. Hit that, and then this one requires a press. I prefer the ones that don't require a press in order to get it to bite um, because it's just easier to on and off. Some of them will require a little press. And what did I do? I went too far. Hold on. Take it back up. There we go. So now it's in there, right? It's stuck until you hit the little lever. So some of the mounts won't require press to lock it in. Most of them will require some kind of press to get it out so it doesn't fall off, which is cool. But I prefer them when you don't have to press it to get it in. So this was just misaligned. In theory, this should just hit and twist. You don't have to press. You don't have to pull the lever, right? Um, so... This light, because of the size, the Bowens mount is a removable piece. So when you don't need it, you can 86 it, right? It's just, it's a fight. It comes off, right? So that's all that's about. Most of them are universal. Most of them are Bowens mount compatible. Um, if you don't get one that's Bowens mount compatible... Uh, I, I mean, when you're shopping and it's, even if it's a great deal, skip it. <laughs> Majority of the modifiers out there are going to be Bowens mount or um, Pro Photo. Pro Photo mount is even better, but that's normally a little bit more expensive. And that's just a rubber ring with a little clip like you see on a cooler. You know, how you clip the cooler shut. That's the, the Pro Photo mount. Those are normally way more expensive. Um, and yeah. That's it. So I'm curious what type of light that Brian already bought. It's a, a Zayu 100. Nice. Bro, you bought that Zayu 100. All right. So here's here's my two favorite modifiers. And again, it's going to depend on your space. The new Amrans that we're talking about or the new Ulanzi, which was like 50, 60 bucks. Let me actually just put that Ulanzi one in there because I think it's basically the same as what... Um, Matthew bought, but this one actually comes with the grid in case you need it. You may or may not need the grid, but let's just put it in here anyway. Um, this is cool because this is like Sammy's talking about. It's a smaller dome, like space. It takes up less space and whatnot. So there's that. And then I like the balls, the lantern, right? I think the lantern modifiers look the best. Let's do that. So my lantern modifier is a uh, Nanlite, but you know, 
Um, you can get it from newer, small rig, GVM, Godox. Like, everybody has one. <clears throat> wow. I don't know. Have you guys seen the new Surui? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Inflatable ones? They're incredible. Here, let me pull you on this. I'll, I'll put up the iFootage one because somebody mentioned that. I think it was jogging. Um, the lanterns are cool. They're super easy to set up. Bowen's mount. And in theory, it should come with a skirt. This one does not, strangely enough. My nail light has a skirt so that I can blind three sides of it. Let me see if the nail light one shows up in here. Yes, but I got this one. So have it. It's worth the extra 10 bucks to get the skirt because you can blind three sides of it or you can make it point really straight down. For product shots, if you're trying to show some like Amazon product or whatever, take the lantern and then throw the skirt straight down. It just does a real good job of like 86ing unnecessary shadows and unnecessary spill from other weird places. So I think this one is good gravy. Uh, let's see. Bucky said he just ordered the, I'm sorry, Bicky, just ordered the 200S. And then Gretchen said, all this light comes up makes me want to start working on my lighting. <laughs> but, but then what would I do with my pseudo Christmas lights and flat panels? Uh, keep the Christmas lights in the back. Uh, set them for like fairy light mode. Um, boom. There you go. And uh, Dina says she loves the homegrown studio lighting. It says, I'm considering consolidating all of my gear into a little setup because I'm going to have a tidy desk set up. It's kind of 100%. Uh, and I, you know what? I have to grab this light stand. I was going to show you a really cool small light stand. All right, now, we was talking about grown folks gear, <laughs> so I'm going to show you my light stand. <laughs> it's super overkill. <laughs> okay, so you anybody that knows this stuff knows that in the, in the world, Avengers are Avengers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is the real deal, but it's a very small light stand, right? This is not to be confused with the Marvel Avengers. This stand right here probably weighs mm, 20 pounds, maybe. <laughs> All right, so I'm just uh, affixing the bottom and then affixing the top. And so now you can see this is my tiny light stand. <laughs> it's kind of silly but this is what's going to end up going back there to the cold bore it goes that high and then one more higher than that so you can see so I guess I should tighten this it's 29 but it's about 40 inches tall, right? <laughs> but solid as a rock. <laughs> so that's a killer little light stand. Uh, what bracket would you affix the Forza or Cobor to a very pole? Uh, Swiss arm, like <laughs> they're super small. They don't really need a lot. Um, a, what's the word? Matthews would do. Let's see. Let me 
Jesus, Paul. But in, those lights are small enough that a Swiss arm with a baby pin would actually hold it down. Because it doesn't offer a lot of weight. Right? So a creator clamp would do that. Um, but are your variables photography version or construction version? That's another question. This is the answer, though. I got the clip for you. Here it is. Boom. So this is a Limo Studio Super Clamp. There's the baby pin spigot already there. You can get your own extension tubes, or you might already have an extension tube, but that is basically how you clamp anything to anything. So any one of the super clamps would do even something like this um, Manfrotto arm that you can attach to the super cramp. So you put the two things, actually, here it is together. Here is the Manfrotto arm with the super clamp that will allow you to do both. Clamp it to what you need to clamp it to. Jed clamp it <laughs> and then put it on. Put it, put it on there. So let me give you this. This will actually come with the clamp. You can get the clamp separate if you happen to have something that you can use to attach. And boom. I have an amazing small soft box, um, but you don't want to see that because <laughs> it's a, a pro photo and a PZF mount, and it's they're crazy expensive. It's a little baby octobox. But yeah, Paul, any of these super clam oriented things. And because the light's not that heavy, rather than going through Monfrotto, you use that as your lead in page to get you to where you want to go. Check out some of the cheaper brands, because in this particular case, it's just a clamp. And then, you know, add light accordingly. So this clamp and this spigot will probably cover you absolutely fine. And it's like 30 volts, you know, so like a little, little bit cheaper. But, uh, the advantage of having the newer, smaller, lighter weight cobs is they don't weigh nothing. So it'd be really easy to mount this stuff with a regular, you know, like clamp and mouse. Paul says, I'm looking into getting, I'm looking at getting some, they would be photo. I need to get rid of the C-SPAN due to, to foot space, 100%. And you live in a place where your ceiling can't really seal. Um, I have one. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. Hand there. That long vertical. Come on, hands. That long vertical thing. That is a a uh, very pole. It's a Monfrotto very pole though. So it's made for photography. You can buy the construction ones for cheaper. Um, but very poles are very good for doing like simple setups and simple setups and takedowns. Um, they're also good for stretching across a ceiling and, you know, like building yourself a lighting rig that way so that you can have it, but, you know, not really do any damage to your place. Really good for those of you who have to deal with, say, uh, apartment dwelling but you want to have a way to mount your lights and cameras off the ground, sort of like Paul's talking about, where it won't be in the way. So this is a very pole. And basically what happens is you have the top and the bottom and this little handle. So you unlock the handle and you pull it out and then you squeeze the handle and that basically... Um, does like a shower rod. You know the shower rod in, in the bathroom when you twirl it to make it fit? Veripole does the same thing. Oh, also makes excellent shower rods. Um, you can buy, if you if the stuff you have is really light, you could go in and get like the, 
the cheaper, like construction oriented ones. Uh, most people are using them in construction to hold stuff up while it dries. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so you're mounting this kind of shelf and you want to mount it level before you put all the hardware in. This is what you see people doing it for. If you have light stuff, you can totally do stuff like this. Um, yeah, I think it's just worth getting the, the video oriented one. And you can see that what links they all come in. Uh, you might see them labeled as a floor jack, floor jack or jack bars or cargo bar. All the above, same. But a really cool and inexpensive way to build overhead rigs. If you live in a place where you can't do any ceiling mounting, those of us that have drop ceilings because of like a commercial style space. So to me, this is silly. <laughs> like getting something like this is dope, but it's crazy because you can just make it with variables depending on how far your sidewalls are away from you or what your drop ceiling looks like. So very cool options. Now, these are pretty dope. I saw these in real life. I've seen them only on Amazon. I have something similar holding up my monitors. Um, I've, I've showed you in the past how to use the ones that are made for monitors and adopt them for cameras. My Insta360 link is actually being held by something like this. But these are also great for overhead shot cameras and things like that where you just clamp it on and um, you can put a camera, mic, Streamer X, uh, Rodecaster Pro 2, anything with a quarter 20 bottom on it will come in completely perfect with something like these and these are relatively inexpensive so you look at this model right here it will give you a place to place your mixer and an overhead camera as long as the overhead camera is pretty light now i wouldn't throw up a fat dsl on there like this dude in the picture <laughs> but you could right also it'll give you a place to put in a little bit of, of like overhead lighting or monitor style lighting so like this is I mean, the scenario that they're showing in this image is very, very dope, right? Like, mount it to something, put your device on there that you need to take a picture of, and then go to town. One last one I'd like to bring to the party just because I think it's dope. Let me go ahead and uh, I like the Ulanzi version of these, but this company tends to sell Ulanzi oriented stuff. <laughs> Uh, dang, this is a really long title, homie. Let me grab that and grab this. Oh, Gretchen, you have one of these? Or are you talking about Sammy? Sammy said, trying to reduce my whole setup. I have a similar setup. For college, I have a 60-watt light, EZV E10, A7. What do you think is the best way to mount the camera light? This is it. <laughs> this is one, but I'm going to show you the version that I use. I actually have three of these because I think there's nothing better. So here you go. Here's my top recommendation. Mm. There it is. There it is. The whole complete set. To me... I have three of these. Uh, there's one on the side right there that runs normally the uh, ZV E10 or A6600. Just just sits up there. Um, and for the longest time, it was a ZV1. And I just I just love this setup. This vertical mount itself is currently holding a ZV E1 with a 20 to 7, 24. For 17 to 28. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, currently holding the ZVE1 17 to 28 and the teleprompter. And then the side one has both the arm and the across, the up and the across. So, anyway, uh, you can get them as just the vertical, or you can get it with the vertical and the arm, right? So, or you can get the arm later. If you find out you don't need it right now and you change your mind, you can always come back and add the arm. So I think it's the best in the business. I legit have three of them in here. Um, I, Yeah, I, they're really hard to beat. I think they're absolutely incredible. And for what you're gonna do, Sammy, especially in a small space, highly recommended. It's 30 AF. 
There you go. So Gretchen does have the Ulanzi style arm. Um, Ulanzi has one that's even more crazy. <laughs> that I again I saw it in real life at uh, NAB. It's the whole shooting match in one entire thing. Hold on, let me see if I can find it real quick. This thing was nuts. It's absolutely nuts. Mm, I think P Potato Jack got one from Ulanzi. Oh, there it is right there on the front page. He's crazy. <laughs> Go back. Right here, the LS21. Oi. Ow. Did that, did that come through? Dude. Look at this thing right here, people. This is fan glorious. But it's everything. This also, Sammy, honestly, for what you're trying to do, this might not be a bad look because it's the whole shooting match in one thing, right? So you got room for your camera, your light, your mic, laptop, the whole nine yards. And when you're done with it, you just whoosh it out the way. So I think it's actually a pretty cool setup. I, I first I thought they were funny until I saw it in action when I was at NAB. And I was like, you know, it's actually kind of incredible. It's actually kind of incredible. It was the whole like desktop situation. Like I just thought it was super, super cool. Um, this is funny because this page doesn't let me click through to the whole situation. So um, Rich's poll is set up like that. There you go. Actually, you mean the one that's at the back studio, right, Rich? The one in front of your backdrop? Here it is. This is what I was looking for. Uh, Potato Jet has a fantastic video on this whole shooting match if you want to go and check it out. I think it's pretty cool. You know, my desk is a little wide for it, but if you have a smaller desk, here you go, Sam. This is you, puppy. Yeah, um, I think it's really cool, though. I mean, all things considered. I wouldn't put the laptop there. That's where I would put my roadcaster. But put the camera there, overhead mic. Not going to use those kind of dorky lights. So I'd probably use a different camera, one for overhead camera and one for, you know, the facing you forward camera. Um, but, yeah, you, you got to do how you do it. <laughs> it's up to you. Uh, pretty cool stuff, though. All the cables management is routed through the middle. Definitely, when you mount this to the table, put a bigger bite surface on it than these clamps. So let me show you what I mean by that because I think it's a good, a good uh, point. This is a hard drive, not a piece of wood, so don't use a hard drive. <laughs> but when you have a clamp like this and you're going to mount it to the desk, it's going to be being held by just these two little surfaces right here. What I like to do is to put a piece of wood in there to give it something bigger to bite onto as opposed to just the desk, especially if you have one of these thin like, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Press board oriented desk. Not your fault. Ikea, they do that to people. Target, Walmart, all of the above. So if you're going to do something like that, go to your Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. In the back where the wood pieces are, they have trash bin that they say, take these for free. Small pieces of scrap wood. And you're just going to get you a piece about this big, you know, a little bigger than this is better you know, maybe like quarter inch to half inch thick and put it in that side, put one in the other side and clamp around it. Number one, that gives you more to bite on. Number two, it spreads that pressure out because if you screw something like this directly to a press board laminated surface, like most of your electric desks, you're going to dent the desk and that press board will just chip right out. 
because inside underneath the white laminate that you see or the black laminate that you see is basically sawdust and glue sometimes it's osb which is chips and glue and so when it starts to get heavy it'll just break and you've probably seen those in somewhere in a college dormitory or jail uh where one of those press board bookshelves has had a blowout and you see all the little wood chippy guts inside. So you can help eliminate that by spreading the surface area out a little bit. What I have in mind is I put, uh, because my desk is hardwood, like it's solid piece of koa, sorry, monkey pod. I put this leather circle just like this underneath the top clamp on the bottom it has a piece of wood so this is just to keep it from scratching the real wood and then i clamp it down and then i took an exacto and then i cut the rest of that and then she go so it adds a little bit more stability a little bit less shake a little bit more satisfaction oh don't tell nobody i told you this you can go to the flooring section of your store and get pergo samples perfect for this <laughs> they will give you the little piece of pergo wood sample just take two of those clamp gangster and it look good because it's pergo <laughs> uh there you go dina said really similar to what you have two cameras lights monitor yes i did see it i roll uh potato jet jean nagata let me find you jeans link YouTube, 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 do, 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 do. you guys making me talk about lighting and studio setups is making my headache go away. Thank you. Because <laughs> it was freaking killing me. Uh, <laughs> you know who else has one? Caleb has one. <laughs> Caleb's face in this this thumbnail right here just cracked me up. Like here, <laughs> that's actually pretty funny, Caleb. So let me give you uh, Caleb's link here. Boom, 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 and then copy that. So there's Caleb's version. And Sammy just found it too. And then where did Potato Jet go? Hey, I didn't realize that Donna did one. Donna is my buddy. Like, absolutely love this cat. One of the nicest people that I ever did met in real life. So let me send you that one. From watching Donna and Caleb, you'll probably f bounce into um, Jean's one, Potato Jet. There you go. I found it. I found it. So it's funny. I believe the ones that you saw on Amazon are not the full, like, Ulanzi joint. Let me take you to the Ulanzi site. I, For me, out of habit, I immediately look at the Amazon version because Ulanzi won't ship stuff to me in Hawaii. I talked to the CEO about this. He said, we'll take a look into it. But this is the actual factual joint let me pop you that link right here and i do believe it's mad modular so you can get down with the get down this is going to be a little bit more a lot a bit more pro than the ones you see on amazon although ulanzi does make a lesser version this is the grown folks version right here so if you're into this sort of thing this is what you're looking at something kind of extremely gangstar 
and you can go to town and set it up any which way you want. Like they got a bunch of different versions of this out there. Three-way pan tilt, zoom, gasmatic arms, like the whole nine yards. So that's the Yolanzi Gear Tree version. Racha. Man, you know the rules, Paul. Buy it right or buy it thrice. Is what it is. I know it's it's hard because you know there's certain things that you can skip and certain things you can't. I tell you what, it'd be hella funny though. So you got your little thing that you caught at the Piggly Wiggly because you know it was way cheaper, and then you put on an eight hundred dollar camera, and then you turn your back, and the next noise you hear is this. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So I'm just I don't know. You do you, P. You do you. I think it's better. I mean, look at my light stand over here. <laughs> Yo, that is funny, right? That's brilliant, actually, Paul. Take one of these, put all your gear on, take the extra arm, and put the cat pad, because that way he got a place to go instead of walking across your desk in the middle of calls. <laughs> That's cool. Super cool. All right. I think we're done. I just wanted to do that. You guys really did help me 86 a headache today. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's it's funny, man. I was cleaning out stuff yesterday. And I don't know why I bought them. It was really stupid. But I have not one but two. They're on sale. I have two freaking big. 31 inch ring lights from newer and I just want to toss them but I can't bring myself to throw them in the trash so I'm going to go donate it to some high school or whatever but they're horrible I don't know what I was thinking when I bought them they are horrible H-O-O-R-I-B-L-E horrible yes so yeah, you end up going through your studio and finding all the crap that you bought that you now realize is trash. And you you know, now you gotta spend time throwing it out. So don't buy trash. It's better to just sit on it and wait and get what you really need. Cause it just becomes landfill. The nano leaf lights. Or nanolites. Yeah, the, dude, this cold bar is the, the business. It is the business. Here. I think I'm going to do something for myself. Okay. Let me do something for myself real quick. Then I'll end the stream. I'm going to make my job easier. <laughs> All right. One of my new favorite pieces of gear is this Colbor CL60 light. Look how tiny it is. It's so tiny. I'll put it next to a cam link for reference. It's tiny. It weighs maybe a pound, and it is super bright and easy. Comes with a Bowens mount that you can pop right on the front adapt to any type of light modifiers and it comes with a reflector bell that fits in that Bowens mount power cord. It even comes with a mount that allows you to connect a mini V-mount battery or V-mount battery if you need to operate it uh, battery operated. So looking for a dope piece of gear to light up your studio, look no further than the Colbor CL60. Tell them Doc sent you. I'll put links in the description. There you go. See, I just made a video for myself. Y'all didn't realize it. So you might see that on the old Zan. <laughs> you might see that with a couple B-rolls on the old Amazon pretty soon. So there, I just recorded a video in the middle of recording a video. <laughs> All right, gang. I'm fixing to go do some work. I got to go to the... Uh... <laughs> You're funny, Paul. have to go to the wood shop but uh this is what paul is talking about i took the outer jacket off mm.
Look at there. Woo. Nice. Man, lights. I'm going to probably mount these to a piece of wood, Paul. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking of mounting these to a piece of wood so that way I can be more modular with it than sticking it to the wall. So that's been my uh, that's been my drag. When I go to the wood shop today, I'll look for something that I can mount these on. Might be worth a look. Might be worth a look. Anyway, I'll send you guys a uh, some video of the wood shop when I get there. I gotta remember to tag Marine X. It's fun to show the the real shop. In comparison to when you used to have to do this mess in the garage. <laughs> anyway, have Milwaukee pin. We'll travel. We'll see you guys again on Saturday. Um, yeah, that's it. That was cool. I appreciate you guys. You guys helped me get through a pain in the butt headache. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I'll see you guys soon. Mahalo. City of mine, how I love, how I love the city of mine. It never gets me down. City